Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm a piano teacher and I'm practicing for a recital that we're going to have next Sunday. And um, I just wanted to share a little practice technique that I'm using right now. It's called chunking. So a lot of times in music, especially as you get more advanced repertoire, there's a lot of repetition, a, a pattern that might be like um, rolling chords or some sort of rocking back and forth motion um, that sort of fills in the space and gives you room to grow. Um, but it's really tedious to practice all of those little notes when you're really needing to work on your transitions, your fingerings, to get from one chord to the next. So I'm going to show you what this passage sounds like when it's played the regular way as written. And then I'm going to break down how to practice that by chunking all of the chords into like single groups. Okay. Um, so this is what I'm working on right now. This is the Beethoven Pastoral Sonata. It's opus 28, sonata number 15, first movement, allegro. Anyway, um, I'm starting measure 100 and looks like 113, just in the middle. And what I'm focusing on right now is this section where we're going. And there's a lot of movement in there. These inner voices have eighth notes that just sort of wobble back and forth, holding out the harmony, filling in the chord, giving yourself like, it gives the musician the opportunity to sort of swell and, um, kind of come back down. So it gives you like musical direction and shape, but it's really exhausting to practice that over and over again. And it's really distracting when you're trying to figure out the fingerings and figure out how to get from one grouping, one fingering grouping, one chord to the next one. If you have all of these inner little voices, all of these little filler notes, it makes it hard to focus on what you need to practice. So, what I like to do is something called chunking, where instead of playing, I just play this. Okay, so I'm not doing any of those wobbly notes. I'm just playing like kind of the, the skeleton of the structure, just the chord. So I'm playing all of the notes. I'm just not repeating them. me to work on the overall melodic um, shape, the movement of the melody, um, without getting bogged up in those inner voices. It allows me to focus on the transitions between one chord to the next and know that my fingers are finding the right notes and stuff like that. So taking it out of, out of rhythm is also very helpful with this. So just playing this one until I'm ready for the next one, I just sit on it and I wait. And I think, okay, my next one has a B sharp. Ooh, B sharp is hard. You think about that. That's actually the same as C, right? Okay, so I make sure I know where I'm going. I think about each of the fingers and where they have to move and how far they have to move. And then I move. And then I sit on this one until I'm ready to go back to what's next. Okay, so I'm going right back to where I was. And now we're going up. I stop, I think. Okay, we're going up one step, but we're keeping the middle voices in the same place wait here until I'm ready to go back down. Now the next one, we've got quite a bit of movement, so I'm gonna stop and think about it for a second. I need to stop and think which fingers I'm going to use for each of these notes. Is that right? It'd be natural instead of a B sharp. Okay, so I just sit on this. Maybe because I got that wrong, I'm gonna go backwards a little. go between these two chords, chunking them, memorizing the shift, the movement, and then I go on, I wait here until I'm ready, uh, then we go up, that's a nice chord, okay, wait till I'm ready, and I kind of almost aim for what 
what's next with my fingers, thinking about where I'm going before I move. Now, let's see what's next after this. We're going up with the right hand, down with the left hand. There's a big jump. Got to get ready with the left hand to jump all the way up. It's like a sixth leap. So did you see how I really took it out of rhythm? I took it out of any sort of sense of tempo and just focused on moving from one chord, waiting until I'm ready, and going straight to the next chord, okay? So chunking the chords and then doing that sort of timeless wait play practice is really, really helpful when you're working on a passage that has lots of filler notes that are in a pattern like a rolling chord or um, going back and forth like an Alberti pattern. So um, just a little practice tip for you. And that that is what I'm using it for a Beethoven sonata, but you can apply this to like so many hundreds of different kinds of pieces. Just anytime you have this mm, repetitive note thing going on, you just take out the repetition and just play the skeleton of the chord. Hope that helps you.